Welcome to Moving On TV. My name is Lauren Hope. I'm the CEO of Moving On TV. Now, as you know, I try to bring real true stories to the public as much as possible to highlight um, the darkness that's in our world and to highlight the heroes that are going out to eliminate it, the heroes that are playing a big part in this massive plan of releasing innocence and creating a better world for us all. Today, I'm honored to be able to interview one of these heroes, Mitchell Nicholas Gerber, who for the last 20 years has been doing all he can to release information <clears throat> about the Falun Gong. Falun Gong, a beautiful high consciousness group of meditators who practice in China and who have been massacred whose organs have been taken from them before death. So tortured and massacred so that their organs can be sold. And so they can annihilate a beautiful, loving, compassionate group of people. These people started to disappear bit by bit in China. Mitchell has been doing this work for 20 years now. This is the anniversary of his work. And I'm very, very grateful to be able to interview him. <clears throat> As now it feels like the work will start to get the recognition it deserves. And we can annihilate these nefarious, corrupt, sick practices in our world and move on into a beautiful new world of light and love and compassion and equality for all. As you know, my background is Jewish and so is his. And we carry within us a history of tragedy and holocausts from the Second World War, where six million of our ancestors, Jews, were sent to gas chambers and tortured because they were different. This time, it wasn't the Jews. It isn't the Jews. This time, it happens to be a new consciousness of human beings teaching us how to heal our mind and our body so that we can prevent diseases of any kind and get over them without needing medicine. Perhaps that is where they've gone wrong this time, in a bigger way, by taking a beautiful, loving, loved group of people and doing to them what they did to the Jews. And being in a time, in the time and consciousness of life where luckily people start to miss them. And because we have the technology to understand this, which we didn't have in the 1930s Germany, leading into the 1940s. Have a think about that. Without technology, we could not know all of this. 
I'm hoping that the new world, the new beautiful world that awaits us at the end of all of this, is a world combining love and technology together. But beyond that, I will now pass you on to Mitchell. Nicholas Gerber, so we can find out what is going on and how his work in Vietnam can impact our world and help us to move on to that beautiful, new, loving, compassionate world that we all dream of and seek. Thank you. I expect this is going to be a roller coaster of an interview again. So make sure that you're prepared. Make sure there's no children in the room. And take care. Falun Dafa, also known as Falun Gong, is an advanced self-cultivation practice that improves mental and physical wellness through physical exercises and the development of one's character. In China, cultivation practices have a history of thousands of years and form the spiritual foundation of Chinese civilization. In 1992, Falun Dafa was introduced to the public by Master Li Hong Zhu. The practice quickly spread because of its profound principles and proven health benefits. By 1999, with over 100 million practitioners, Falun Dafa had grown to become the largest practice of its kind in China and around the world. Traditional Chinese medicine focuses on energy channels and believes that the health of the body is related to the health of the mind. Make sure there's no children in the room. And take care. Okay. So, hi there, Mitchell. So it's Mitchell Nicholas Gerber. Yes, yes. hi, Laura. Nice to be hi. with you. Oh, it's so wonderful, wonderful to meet you. So at the moment, you're in Vietnam, is that right? Yes, I am 100 miles away from the Chinese border okay. in Vietnam. So let's, let's go back to the beginning a little bit, because I like to look at uh, where all this comes from, a little bit of history. So we were chatting a little bit, and you told me that you originally you were born in South Africa, and then you went to live in America and you became an American citizen. Mm -hmm. What I gather, you've been doing this work. This is your 20th anniversary, as you were saying. From yes. When you were a young 20-year-old, you've been yes. involved in highlighting this awful, awful situation and doing your work. So how did you get involved in such work? I mean, why would a 20-year-old man suddenly be called to do such serious heroic work like you do oh i'm grateful lauren of just being on your show and you know you're making historic proportions as well because i tell you when the world wakes up and really comes to understand and realize the severity the unprecedentedness the uh, magnitude of this crime against the innocent spiritual movement, namely Falun Gong in China and others, particularly Falun Gong, um, again, by the Chinese Communist Party, the world is not going to really be able to remain unshocked and will be so soul-stirred by a superpower doing this to its people, killing them for their organs. Anyway, we'll get into that later, but 
I was so moved as a young boy. I was a young boy, 21 years old. I was studying international business. I was in one of the top 10 schools in Atlanta, Georgia, in the south of the United States. I was um, working. My father got me an internship at one of the top investment houses in Atlanta, Georgia. And I was studying international business. I was the president of Amnesty International at that time. I was the president of this. I was the president of that. I was the inventory manager and director of the College of Business at the university. So I was heading for a lot of great business things. However, in my heart and in my soul and in my spirit, there was something lacking, something I was yearning, something I was longing for, which was a spiritual foundation, a mission that had... Was, it was igniting within me, and I never knew this was the time. So one day, on a fateful day of May 4th, 2001, May the 4th, may the force be with you, as they say in Star Wars of the Jedi, I came across a beautiful little human rights and international fair with all kinds of Native American music and bands and different minor body and health, new age modalities and spiritualities and Wealth, uh, health and fitness uh, 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 booths. And uh, I was meeting up with my friend, and he turns, to, he turns to me and he says, what is that, Mitch? Maybe you'll be interested in that. Because about three or four days prior, I was into yoga, and I love yoga, and I love Tai Chi, and I love uh, martial arts. I was always a Bruce Lee fan growing up when I was younger. So I turn to this booth, and I see these Chinese people uh, of all ages, all, about 70-year-olds, 25, 26-year-olds, 40-year-olds, and young 10- and 15-year-olds practicing these slow-moving, uh, easy-to-learn exercises, these gentle exercises, and this beautiful ancient Chinese music that just made me feel very peaceful, relaxed, and at ease with this Chinese gentleman uh, conducting in Chinese the exercise instructions. And I just saw them all beautifully moving at the same time, like a ballet or like a performance arts. And I was like, wow, this is great stuff. I want to check this out. So me and my friend Molly, uh, we, we go, you know, her, her fo- basically her fo- she was studying with me. And anyway, she, we, go, we go up to the booth and we get a flyer. And the flyer reads, uh, you know, I don't know if you can see this. But um, it says uh, yeah. Falun Dafo, Falun Gong. So I'm like, okay, you know, this is interesting. Um, truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. It seems very cool and looks good. Is this some kind of religion? Because I'm not interested in religion. I'm not, I come from a Judeo Christian family background already. I'm not into religion. I don't want anything dogmatic. I don't want to be forced to do anything. Um, I've heard about cults in this world which force people to do things against their will, charge a lot of money, and then you're not free to go. So I was very cautious and wary at the time, and I don't want anything spiritually wooey-wooey. I'm more of like a a fitness fanatic. So I was like, let me try it out. Why not? I looked at my friend Molly, and I was like, you want to try it out? Okay, let's go ahead. So we go in the park, and we learn the exercises, and the first exercise I couldn't believe Lauren I was like oh my god the first exercise of Falun Gong also known as Falun Dafa it's two names but the same practice unblocks the energy channels of the human body and I immediately felt like in my body pop 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 like everything just popping in around my body I'm like oh my god this is amazing congestion is just opening my energy channels and the flow of energy flowing, and I felt this warm feeling, this current through my body, much more relaxed, and I immediately felt re- stress relief, anxiety relief, because I was going through a lot of trouble, anger, frustration, stress, um, smoking a lot, partying a lot, and I was like, this is amazing. And after that day, I wanted to learn more about this Falun Gong. So before I started to look more into it, learned the exercises, read Mr. Lee's book, who is the founder, Mr. Lee Hong Tzu, an amazing Qigong master, they call teacher, Qigong teacher in China. Um, uh, he was the most awarded and most popular Qigong, practice, uh, uh, Qigong teacher or um, new age teacher in China, introduced 
Falun Gong into the general public. And I looked into it and I was like, there's nothing cultish about this. There's nothing evil about this. But why is the Chinese communist regime, why is the Chinese government brutally persecuting these people, slandering them as a sinister, demonic CIA bat cult and killing them? Why? And torturing them. And I've always known that communism is an evil, tyrannical regime because my family came from, from, from Hungary. They come from Eastern Europe. So they, they've told me stories about communism and how evil and how devastating communism is. But I never really understood it myself because I was never under that kind of reign of terror. Only, the, only when I learned about it, you know, I came to really feel that I had to make it my duty to expose this. And I felt that at a young age of 21, I literally turned my entire focus. I put my businesses, I put my, my career, I put women, I put everything on the line. I was like, okay, no thanks, no partying, no, no indulgences. I just want to focus fully and completely on exposing this evil of the communist regime against Falun Gong and others Tibetans and Uyghur Muslims and house Christians and learn to be more of a spiritual stable kind of person. So this is my story in a nutshell. This is where I am now. Wow. Okay. Um, just, just to pick up what you were saying there. So how did you actually find out about what was going on with the people, with the Falun Gong? Did someone tell you that when you were, you know, you said you started mixing with them and learning the practice of Falun Gong. How did you find out that this awful massacre was happening? Right there, when I was at the booth, I saw these brutal depictions of practitioners in China being killed, being tortured, over a hundred torture methods, being submerged in water, in cages, uh, female practitioners thrown into, ca into prison cells with criminals, and the criminals were basically forced to rape the Falun Gong practitioners' women, forced abortions. I mean, just horrible, horrible depictions. And I, something deep inside me called me to act, like beat to quarters, like wrapped me into, into, into action, that I had to do something. So I took it upon myself to get involved more and more. And basically... It's not that hard to learn about this because it's all been exposed. I mean, there's over 52 pieces of evidence against the Chinese Communist parties for their crime of, 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 of forced organ harvesting. The, um, the document, there's over 15, 10 to 15 documentaries out there. So, but at that, but at that time, we didn't have the media, we didn't have the power, we didn't have the resources. Uh, to expose this, coming up against a red dragon like the communist regime that controls uh, uh, a billion people, has the second largest eco economy, the, 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 the largest military, um, has its claws in basically every single known government body and NGO and agency around the world, including the United Nations, where the United Nations just put the Chinese Communist Party on its Human Rights Council, in control of its Human Rights Council. I mean, what is this nonsense? The World Health Organization in bed with the communist regime, the governing bodies, the medical centers around the world, the Transplantation Society, the Vatican, world governments, I mean, are all in control and all the, the, the IMF, the World, the, the, the World Monetary Fund, the, um, the, uh, the, the Rockefellers, the Henry Kissinger, the, the, the corporate think tanks, the Wall Street bankers, the international banking elite, they're all involved with the Chinese Communist Party. So at that time, the world didn't know about it. And when the mainstream media wanted to learn about it and cover it, they were bombarded by an absolute deluge of propaganda, demonizing Falun Gong, saying this is a, some kind of sinister, evil, radical cult. And the, the, the Chinese Communist Party basically set up a staged immolation where they set five people on fire, including a 12-year-old daughter and her mother, in Tiananmen Square, staged it like a movie set and said that this is what Falun Gong practitioners do. They burn themselves, they commit suicide, and then broadcasted it 24-7 
every single day for 24 hours on all their central television news agencies claiming that Falun Gong are these kind of evil cult members, which severely poisoned the minds and the hearts of the Chinese people. Um, because by 1998, one out of every 10 Chinese national citizens were practicing Lauren. That was 10% of the population, 100 million people. From, government, from the Chinese government's own estimates, 70 to 100 million people. So the Chinese Communist Party had to do something to demonize it and to radically change overnight the opinion of the Chinese people against Falun Gong. So this is what they did. And not only to destroy Falun Gong and to declare war against Falun Gong at every kind of economic, social, and political level in China, but to now make money off the Falun Gong practitioners because they knew how good their organs were after practicing the exercises. And so they started to send Falun Gong practitioners to state-mandated hospitals, cut out their organs while alive, sell the organs for massive profits, create a multi-billion dollar income-generating profiteering business for the last 20 years, conceal the facts, collude with the governing bodies around the world to cover up this and bribe the officials and all the people involved around the world to keep quiet and the medical associations around the world and kill people, kill them, create a kill to order business uh, off the following on organs. Um, so yeah. this, this, is what ma this is what made me uh, call to arms, but beat to quarters. I mean, to really spend and, um, for the last 20 years, give my life, Lauren, give my life to expose this. No money, no power, no fame, no fortune. I've got no degrees. I've got no businesses. I've got no uh, 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 think tanks and sponsors. I've got nothing. This has just been my spiritual campaign and crusade, but I am not some kind of hero. I chose this because I feel in life, and there's many people doing the same thing, whether on a large scale or a short scale or, or a small scale. I felt in my heart, what is a man who cannot make the world a better place? And to fail to expose the evil and to fail to stand up and protect good and to rescue people and just to defend good people, whether you're Chinese, whether you're Japanese, whether you're a Muslim, whether you're a Buddhist man or woman, homosexual, transgender, it does not matter. To fail to expose evil and to fail to stand up for what is good is unacceptable in my book. So mm -hmm. I, uh, I've chosen this uh, to expose I evil. I agree. And I feel exactly the same as you. Yeah. I mean, I've been red pilled um, around medicine for quite a long time, my gut feelings. And, but when I found out about what's happening to children, it was so difficult to not go out there and do something, you know. So this is my way of bringing stuff to the public as much as I can. But um, And you're absolutely, to me, you are a hero. Everyone who can do something and all of us together, that's how we can mm. change our world. Um, but coming back again, I'd like to go back a little bit again. Please. Um, to 20 years ago, I mean, how did it feel to you, such a young person, to see such evil? As you say, you came from a good background. Yes, you were working in Amnesty, so you were aware that horrible stuff was happening, but this is like so uh, horrendous and catastrophic that how did it affect you? I mean, how did you feel when you couldn't even get a media station to, to put it out there to help people. I mean, you must be very, very strong. Oh my God. To cope with such atrocities and, and uh, you know, carry on regardless. So could you say uh, about that? Yes, with pleasure. Wow. First of all, disappointment in the, the Amnesty International. I am absolutely disgusted in the NGOs. That's why I didn't join them. That's why I didn't even waste my time joining the United Nations, joining Amnesty International, and joining these people because they talk the talk and they don't walk the walk. Now, I'm not saying all of Amnesty International or all of the United Nations and people who are working for CARE and other NGOs don't 
give of themselves. I'm not saying that at all. But I had to go on my mission and my own spiritual lone warrior path because I didn't see results quick enough. I didn't see the effectiveness quick enough. And I went to these people and I approached them. Even in, in the university, I remember my political professor, my political studies, I, was, I, I formed the, the Falun Gong Human Rights Group at Georgia State University, one of the top 10 schools at that time, about 20 years ago. Anyway, and I asked the professor, I had to go around and get a sponsored professor in one of the departments to sponsor me for my, 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 my club to go public and to be uh, confirmed and accepted. So I went and no one would sponsor me. And I thought to myself, well, that is weird. Why, would they, why wouldn't they sponsor me? It's the same as me calling Lauren. And that's why God bless you, because you are a beautiful soul for allowing me to come on your show. You, can't be, you don't even know what you've done. Because the thing is, I've contacted serious, serious media personalities, celebrities from the right to the left to the moderates, big it. people. Big people who are talking nonstop about this coronavirus and the CCP virus and the Chinese, 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 Chinese. And I plead with them and I call them and I talk to them and I send them videos of my faces showing them communist Vietnam, showing them that I'm risking my life on the front lines, showing them that at any time I could be taken out and put into a gulag. And I don't care because I don't, mind, I don't fear life. I don't fear death. But they say nothing and they come back to me for nothing. And I all know that they're watching and I see them because the communist regime is watching me and I see them. I see them look at my views and I feel them. I feel their energetic uh, vibrations looking in. I'm like, okay, we'll get back to him. Okay. We are, I would like to have my own in shock, but I, I, I'll get back to him. But you, Lauren, you took the risk. You are the hero. You courageously called me on your show out of your own volition and enthusiasm, out of your own heartfelt compassion to, for me to share with your listeners and your viewers about Falun Gong. And I wish to God that they followed your leadership and your courage and your conviction and your heroship. So I bow to you, Lauren, for letting me come on this show. This is how I feel. So at that time, when I was pleading with the people, the political, the political uh, professors, uh, professor took me aside and said, Mitch, I can't support you. I can't sponsor your Falun Gong human rights group. I said, why not, Professor? Because there's too much economic and political pressures for my communist Chinese colleagues. And I remember, and I said, okay, and I walked out of her office. I said, goodbye, polite, and I walked. And when I saw her, because I used to have to walk up and down the streets when I parked my car and I walked to class, I saw her coming towards me and I looked at her and she couldn't even look at me. And I felt her shame. I felt her guilt. And I hope she can change her mind. Well, eventually I formed the Falun Gong booth, Falun Gong Human Rights Group. But even when I was at Georgia State and I was on campus and I, would, I blew up the pictures, uh, I, I spent money and blew up the pictures for the protesting. And I was just a one-man army. I've been a one-man army for 20 years. Okay. Oh. People, people would still look at me like I was crazy. And I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you a story. I know I'm talking a lot here. Forgive me. Um, no, no, no. You keep flowing. keep flowing. You shared with me that you're from a Jewish family. And I'll, I'll tell you straight. One day I was in New York. And I was, we were all called there for, I, I just went there because there was a torture exhibitions. They had torture exhibitions set up all around New York City around the subway stations. It was about a week or two for the torture exhibitions in New York City, um, showing New Yorkers what was going on in China, how the communist regime was torturing Falun Gong practitioners in China. And I remember I was manning a, and working at a torture booth in a very Jewish district, okay, where Jewish uh, very Jewish traditional uh, Orthodox Jews were attending uh, Shul synagogue, and um, I was getting very uh, frustrated uh, because I would see the rabbis with their um, with their garb, with their garb, their Orthodox garb on, okay, and the yarmulke, the, the, the and the, you know, their big beards, and you know the, the the very Orthodox rabbis and Jews, and just walking by, not even noticing, just walking by, 
walking by, and it was pretty noticeable, it was pretty vivid, walking by, and one Orthodox rabbi, I believe he was, he stopped, and I was like, excuse me, excuse me, uh, and he said, no, 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 I've got to go, I'm like, but you should know better, you should know better, you're Jewish, you should know better, you should know better, and I was yeah. like this, and I was like, okay, and one of, the, one, of the, one of the Chinese people were like, wait, 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 just take it easy, take it easy, and I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand, my family was in the Holocaust, my mm -hmm. family is Jewish and you know Christian Jewish Jewish what they God knows but they had to they, they fled Odessa they fled Ukraine they fled Hungary because the Nazis and came to to South Africa where I was born okay what then I, I, I calmed down so as soon as I calmed down this little old lady walks up to me it's, it's true story okay and she says excuse me sir I'm looking for this sub the subway uh, station. I'm trying to meet my daughter. Can you show me? I'm like, ma'am, I don't know where this uh, this, this station is. I, I I haven't been in New York. I'm only here for a couple of days. Um, and she's like, okay, um, well, thank you. But before I go, what is all this? This is looking terrible. What is going on here? And I said, well, this is this is what the Chinese Communist Party has been doing to innocent prisoners of conscience, namely Falun Gong practitioners, killing them and harming them and hurting them and brutally persecuting this them. This is even before the organ harvesting. Okay, we didn't even I didn't even know about this was going on. This is before. This is around 2004, 2005. Only in 2006 were, were the allegations coming out. So this was not even, we didn't even know about this organ harvesting uh, uh, business before 2006. And we'll get into this a little bit in a minute. So she says, oh, that is terrible. Well, what can I do to help? She says, well, ma'am, you can write it, you can sign a petition, and you can take a flyer for your daughter and your family, and you can spread the truth and the word about this and support uh, this. And she's saying, sure, I will. And she signed the petition. She took a flyer, and before she left, before she left, do you can you can you can you uh, have? Do you have an idea what she did? I showed you the number on her arm. Um... From Auschwitz. Yeah. yeah. She was from Auschwitz. Yeah. Yeah. I... And that really, that really, you know, I, <clears throat> I just want to hold back the tears, but that all these rabbis. All these wonderful, wonderful, wonderful religious people from the Buddhist sects, from the Christian sects, the great bishops, the great archbishops, the great popes. I'm sorry, I'm having a moment. No. With all their garb and all their religious deity nonsense and all their praying all day and all their fake, phony scriptures, this woman pulls up her, pulls up her, her sleeve and shows me the Auschwitz number. She says, you know what? I was in Auschwitz. I survived. Mm -hmm. And I will share this with my family. Mm -hmm. Lauren, that's when I knew. No one will know. No, no religious book, whether you're Christian, Catholic, Buddhist, Taoist, uh, Jewish, you can, you can pray all day. You can be a Hare Krishna. You can burn incense all day. You can pray to your, in, your, in your pagodas and in your mosques and in your synagogues and your churches, but you know nothing until you really know. Mm -hmm. And this person from Auschwitz came up to me and signed a petition and took a flyer and spent five minutes of her precious time knowing about the truth and wanted to do something because she knew about the suffering. She knew what it meant to suffer. Yeah. And she, 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 should, she, should go, excuse me, she should go into these, these religious, uh, uh, she should go uh, uh, and talk in these churches and these synagogues and, and, and educate these so-called preachers and priests and rabbis of what it really means to be Jewish, what it really means to be Christian, what it really means to be a spiritual person. Because she lived it. Exactly. You know what, Mitchell? Um, Anyway, Thanks that's my story. With what you're saying, um, I think really, I think the, the problem is that people are not interested unless it's something to do with them. Yes, exactly. And I think what you came across there was um, <clears throat> once the Holocaust had happened, it will never happen again, but that's all we care about. We just care about each other. <clears throat> and the world has came to a point where um, I noticed people just forgot about anyone that didn't concern them. I mm -hmm. think the Christian church would have their causes 
the Jews would have their causes and, and no one was prepared to put themselves out to get involved in what you were doing. Now, I identify so much with you, not obviously with what you're doing, but in a, a bit of a similar way. The reason I started moving on TV is because I'm an artist that recovered 100% from mental illness without medication. I have a big story. And um, I tried to tell my story without medication, without drugs, without buying into the, you know, the industry. And not one media person or celebrity or anyone, not, no charity, would support me. Like yourself, I do everything on nothing, on zero, basically zero money. And I started moving on TV because for you, for me, for every single unique human being that is special to me, I, I, I have absolutely no respect for celebrities at all. I never did, particularly after my experiences. To me, they're just puppets. And they're given a job, they're, they're you know, they're, they're in some kind of trance, whatever. But they're given a job to do, to serve the narrative. And now it's all breaking down. And people like yourself will get people listening to them, not just because the world is, because we've got to a point where, as you said, the whole world is locked down because of all of this that's been happening. It's come to such a head now where we cannot deny anything. The evil is just so, you know, when I talk about the fact of what happened to the Jews, to me, it, it's a speck in the ocean when you think about what you're seeing, when you think about the amount of people that have been murdered with chemotherapy, by Big Pharma, fam my family. You cannot deny the amount of murder and, uh, and what they've done to our world. Um, and always as being a Jew and growing up in Israel, it'll never happen again, it'll never happen again. I am grateful for the fact that I grew up in Israel because my insight of watching, I've been watching now for years, I've been watching, and the minute they brought this virus out, it was like, oh my God, it's happening again. And, and the, the people that became, oh, no way, you know, numb themselves, I don't want to know, denial. I thought, well, you're going to have to wake up, mate, because if you don't wake up, you'll be in a concentration camp. <laughs> it's all happening again, because we haven't learned. We haven't learned how to love. We haven't learned how, how to use our hearts but only now are we learning so your work yes. after 20 years yours and Liz Crokin and, and I interviewed John Wedger he he is highlighting satanistic ritual abuse in England it's all coming up and everyone has been working for years and years and years is able to tell their story not just the moving on TV but there will be more platforms so coming back to yourself, the, the, I knew you were going to say that. I think my father told me a similar story. You see, people that came from Auschwitz, that came from the camps that are still alive, they must have such a sense of gratitude in them and compassion for people and life mm. that that woman was able to see beyond. Oh, I know. Look you, look at you, and see a hero. So is looking beyond, and that's well, what you are. You are. God bless, and uh, I, you know, thank you for saying that because you know, there's a saying. Um, first, they came for the Christians in the times of 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 Nero, and I did not speak out because I was not a Christian. Then they came for the Jews in the time of the Holocaust, and I did not speak out because I was not. I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for the Falun Gong in the time of the persecution against them under Chinese communist rule. But I did not speak out because I was not at a Falun Gong. But then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. 
Exactly. And that's exactly what's happening now. And yeah. we have no option but to wake up. And millions and millions of people are. So I want you to tell me a little bit, what are you doing in Vietnam at the moment? And what's the connection? I have uh, dedicated my life to expose the Chinese Communist Party. And I'm doing that as best as I can. You know, I've got all the lists of the, uh, of the um, I go on Twitter because I haven't got much money. I've got very little money. And um, I, right now, I just, I just received a little job. I'm working about 12 hours a week uh, teaching three and four and five-year-olds um, at a little center. Uh, a friend of mine center just making a little bit of money so I can pay rent and food yet my whole dedication in Vietnam was has been exposing the Chinese Communist Party so I go on YouTube and Facebook and I try to find podcasts like yours and radio shows to expose this and I was thinking well instead of because I, ca I can't go into Vietnam and, and give a flyer it's 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 banned right now because the communist Vietnamese government is very much in bed with the Chinese communist regime, the same as in Southeast Asia. A lot of governmental bodies, the United Nations, the World Health Organization, which I call the Communist Health Organization, as you were talking about the, the big pharma, they want to push out and force vaccinations in the UK. As we speak, they, they want to force it. It's disgusting. It's not going to happen. <laughs> no. No, and, and the Sharia law, they want to try and take over the UK with the Sharia law, with the radical jihadists. I mean, they're also just as bad with, uh, with in bed with the Chinese communist regime, with Iran, in bed with the communist, the, the Iranian regime. I was, I was on a show this morning, and we were talking about that as well. There was the, the Bill Gates, the, 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 the Luciferians. I mean, even the Queen of England is, is part of the reptilian uh, structure. I mean, and the global cabal. And they're liars. They're all a bunch of liars. They very know full well. It's like the same people who were put into a position to help and protect and save and rescue humanity are the same very people who are now destroying humanity. It's a big conspiracy fact of depopulation and deception. Mm -hmm. And they want to destroy the fabric of the United States. They want to destroy the fabric of the UK. They want to destroy the fabric of the last great normal free societies and still or not still excuse me install a, a communist style system so in vietnam i have just doing putting a, taking it upon myself to expose this evil online and do what i can um before my time is up um before i cannot i can no longer do it and so without being able to, I can't go anywhere. I don't have much money. I have very little, like I said, I've dedicated everything. I've, I've neglected everything. I've sacrificed everything, Lauren. I don't have any businesses. I don't have any sponsors. I don't have any investments or savings or 401ks or I have nothing. But a heart yeah. of gold. You're an indie so guy like me. Yes. Yeah, so I stay on the computer. Oh. <laughs> yes so i sat on the computer and i go on a twitter and i'm like please uh tucker Carlson, please Pier pierce morgan i'm mitchell nicholas gerber allow me to come on your show i'm 100 miles away from the communist border i send them a two-minute video i go out to richie allen and what are the other guys i mean you know so many different people from 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 bbc to fox news to cnn to msnbc to the radio shows to russell brand yeah. and i'm like listen russell i'm surprised please yeah i'm not share surprised. with me allow me to come on your show to, just to just to expose you just ex expose this evil with you mm -hmm. um but nothing but that's why here you are lauren allowing me to come on your show and I wish more people and I have a feeling and I'm not going to give up the feeling and the faith in these people to, to, to finally very soon allow me and the investigators, more so the investigators, David Kilgore, David Mattis, Ethan Gutman, Dr. Enver Totti to come on those, to come on these shows to expose this evil. So yes, I'm, I'm just very grateful to, to be a part of, um, of your show today because we are making history. Thank you, Mitchell. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, 
I mean, I've contacted Russell Brand <laughs> lots of times because of the mental health thing. I don't have any trust, as I say, in, at the moment. I believe that light workers are being placed in the media. Um, we have a guy called Eamon Holmes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he was doing something about five, somebody rang up about 5G a while ago and he was doing a This Morning program and he had the guts to say it may not be good for us. So uh, I think the people you may be able to contact on Fox are Hannity. Hannity and Tucker Carlson are very, very... I'm um, trying. Uh, I'm trying with all my heart. You know, at the moment, as I say, the media, um, from what I can see, and the puppets of the media, which is celebrities, are only involved in pushing the narrative. But we are waking up all over the place and there is a whole big truth media out there. Um, so what I want yes. to ask you is we, we said now that the world is on its knees and we've come to a point where it is our issue. The minute you mention China, everyone knows there's something not right. There's something not right about this virus. So you've made the connection. I've made my connections. You've made the connection. There were people going on the street. They were demonstrating. They were probably finding out about what's happening, as you say, to the Falun Gong. And, and they wanted their independence. And so they came up with something and they got them off the streets. <laughs> they, you know, they stopped all the demonstrations in their tracks. Um, to, and then somehow, but I'm interested in your, your take on on this virus is what's the connection between what you're doing and what we're dealing with now, this massive lockdown. The Chinese Communist Party deliberately unleashed this virus as a power grab because they know that the Communist Party is about to collapse. This is our deep intel. Not many people are aware of this. Yet the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, the Red Reign of Terror, this wicked scoundrel gangster monstrosity that has never, ever been compared to other, other, any other regimes in the, on the face of history, literally, whereas they have killed a hundred, over 100 million people, decimated 5,000 years of Chinese traditional culture, have their claws in every known government body and agency in the world, more um, embassies and the largest military and the second largest economy and the most amount of people in this world, what, 1.3 billion Chinese slaves. They control the institutionalized slavery system of mainland China, which is uh, founded upon and or the, where the consumer slave market of America and the world is founded on. Um, the... Communist Party is collapsed. It has collapsed. The, the, the social, political, and economic spectrums are in complete disarray, complete chaos, and complete uh, uh, um, um, fragility. It's completely finished. And this President Xi deliberately unleashed this bioweapon. It has been uh, confirmed, and it is getting confirmed more and more. A friend of mine, uh, Joshua Phillips from the Epoch Times, actually produced a viral sense video uh, documentary called the, the Origins of the Wuhan Virus that went viral within a matter of hours. 70 over 70 million views on, YouTube, on, on Facebook and millions on YouTube. Obviously, YouTube and Facebook, which I call Chicom Book and ChaiTube, Okay, because they are bought, they are in bed with the Chinese Communist regime, just like the just like Google is, just like Bill Gates is, just like Microsoft is, and Yahoo Systems and Sun Microsystems and and Cisco Systems, they're all in bed with the Chinese Communist Party and Twitter, Twitter I call it, all Chicoms, okay, all Chicom intelligence. They, ban they, 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 have, they they censored it with their false news and fake news checkers, okay to deliberately censor it and deliberately demonize it as some kind of false news and fake news narrative, which is completely untrue, in order to defend the Chinese Communist Party. Okay? Um, Francis Boyle is a, re a renowned, um, uh, let's see, I have the article up here. Let me share it with you and your listeners. Um, 
here. It is, um, I don't see the actual re request. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Francis Boyle, who drafted the Biological Weapons Act, has given a detailed statement admitting that the 2019 Wuhan coronavirus is an offensive biological warfare weapon and that the World Health Organization already knows about it. He was the one that drafted legislation for biological weapons conventions and it was known as the Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act of 1989, and it was approved unanimously by both houses of Congress and signed into law by President W.H. Bush. He came out speaking about how this was a patient zero has been uh, uh, established or confirmed uh, in the Wuhan lab. This is not from a wet market. This is not from a bat. And was it deliberately unleashed? by the Chinese Communist Party because it is on the verge of collapse. And so this is the CCP virus. There is no doubt about it. This has been confirmed. All the radical uh, communist mouthpieces out there that are saying it's racist to call this the Chinese Communist Party virus. This is not the Chinese flu. This is not the American flu. This is not the British flu. This, or the Muslim flu or the Christian flu or the homosexual or the transgender flu. This is, or the Rainbow Nation flu. This is the Chinese Communist Party virus unleashed Trump by the Chinese Communist Party. Sorry, yeah. They did. They yes. Trump bracious when he said the Chinese virus. This is, is. The, these people are, and I wish Trump would take the gloves off and say, listen, you people are mouthpieces to the Chinese Communist Party. But he can't do that right now because he, he knows that if he says this, China, the communist regime is ready to go to war. So he has to be very careful how he handles it. Yes. Now, everyone else is in the pockets of the communist regime. He just halted the, uh, the, um, the funding to the World Health Organization. Yeah. That's huge. That's, That's huge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he, stopped it. he knows about the forced organ, uh, forced organ harvesting. He hasn't done anything yet. He hasn't banned organ tourism, which is t pretty disappointing. Only yeah. Israel, Taiwan, and Spain, and, and, and I think Italy, but t Taiwan, Spain, and Italy... Uh, sorry, uh, Israel was the first one. Taiwan and Spain have banned organ tourism from their countries. Now think about that, Lauren. That is extremely disappointing given the nature of organ tourism and the multi-billion dollar profiteering business that has been established. Sorry, can I stop you there a second? Organ sure, sure, sure. tourism? What does organ tourism mean? Organ tourism is basically the communist regime establish a, establishing a multi-billion dollar business of the extracting and the forced removal of the, the Falun Gong organs, the spiritual movement of Falun Gong, and then selling, it, selling them around the world to rich uh, Chinese and rich international patients and biotech firms and medical associations at a kill-to-order uh, uh, um, business on a specified date. Yeah, I saw that in the, the website you sent me. Yes, stoporganharvesting.org. Anybody, could go, anybody yes. could go to China and just like that, they could get their health organs possibly because, of course, these people, their consciousness is so high. It's uh, macabre. It, it's, you know, it's like I'm completely <laughs> vegan and I never touch medicine. And so I'm a target. You know, the most, the healthiest people in the world are the ones they can make the most money off. Correct. I think that's why they push veganism in the media. Because anything <sighs> media does, I don't trust. I'm not talking about the normal vegans that I have lots of friends. The, the veganism that's being pushed by the media is actually rubbish. <laughs> but they're pushing it. They're pushing, so, you know, they're pushing a lot of stuff. Anything the media pushes is not good. <laughs> Sorry, just to come back to you. This is it's just so so horrific. And I oh. that Israel may uh, actually stopped it, they ended it on this film that YouTube on sorry, on the website that you sent me. That some countries bowed out of it, but people don't know about this. This is the thing. The only thing I know or knew about Falun Gong was a couple of years ago. I saw that horrific picture of the bodies lying in bags. That was it. And I, I saw that name 
Falun Gong. And then I, I didn't make the connection until you started to talk about it now, when I first, you know, a couple, last week. And I thought, is there, what is this? I didn't, I thought it was a place. Mm-hmm. And you've made the connection because we don't hear anything about it. Uh, you know, it's, there's so much coming at us all at the same time, but it's all connected. It's all connected. Yes, exactly. And to understand how organ harvesting could happen, Lauren, in China, it's crucial to understand that there is no limit uh, to how far the Chinese Communist Party will go to wipe out something or someone. So when the persecution started in July 1999, the complete crackdown, I mean, forbidden to practice Falun Gong. Falun Gong was banned in China. The three reasons why is because Falun Gong, the spiritual movement, became the largest spiritual mind and body practice in all of Chinese history. One out of every 10 Chinese national citizens were practicing Falun Gong exercises and philosophy of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance, outnumbering the number of people and membership uh, uh, of the communist regime by 30 million people. Number two, the second reason why Falun Gong was outlawed was because of the stark contrast in ideology. Falun Gong stands for the ancient roots of China, the beautiful ancient spiritual roots of China of 5,000 years, where, which is truthfulness, compassion and tolerance, being kind, uh, 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 nurturing your nature, being good in business, being honest, being truthful, being tolerant. And the third reason was because the Chinese re- regime realized that they could make a serious amount of money off the organs of the Falun Gong practitioners because when you practice Falun Gong exercises and you live more of a truthful, compassionate, and tolerant lifestyle, your body becomes extremely healthy. So they realized this through medical research that Falun Gong was exemplary and um, uh, was incredibly effective in the results of physiological and psychological benefits and extraordinary health benefits. So they wanted to kill them for their organs. So when the persecution of Falun Gong started, the president and leader of the Chinese Communist Party at that time, in the 19, in, around 1990, 1999, his name is Jiang Zemin. When the persecution began, Jiang Zemin, the leader of the, of the Chinese Communist Party, was seeking a way to consolidate his own power while also eliminating the largest movement of thought in recent Chinese history. So to achieve uh, his goals, he knew he needed, he needed to do one, one thing more than ever, that create hate. So he devised a demonic, weaponized, venomous campaign of lies, deception, slander, dehumanization, vilification, uh, of Falun Gong practitioners to carry out this persecution and to incite, like the Nazis, like the Nazis. Just yes, yeah. yes, like the Hutus with the Tutsis in Rwanda, where the Hutus called the Tutsis cockroaches and feminized them and dehumanized them and broadcasted it out into the public and said that the Tutsis are cockroaches, we must go and hack them and kill them to death. And what happened? Within eight days, and the United Nations was there, you can see the movie, the famous movie with, John, uh, with Don Cheadle, uh, Hotel Rwanda, where 80,000 Tutsis were massacred, were macheted with knives, with, 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 with blades. A day, there was about 800,000 Tutsis just killed. Luckily, the Tutsis gained ammunition and gained guns to fight back. They had to, because otherwise their entire bloodline would have been wiped out. Because the United Nations didn't do a goddamn thing, excuse my language. The Marines didn't do a goddamn thing. I was sitting, you know, it's just funny. The people I come across in life, Lauren, is unbelievable on my path. God and the creation and the world and the universe works in mysterious ways. We're all pinto beans in the great chili of life, as my brother Stretch would say. And God hates a coward. But I come across a Marine when I was in San Diego, and he was one of the guys in Rwanda at the, at the, at the medical base, at the, at the airport, when the genocide was going on. And they were told to stand down. They were given an order to stand down. And he wanted to go with his Marines to, to help the, the Rwandans 
to help the Tutsis when the Hutus were coming with all these machetes and killing hundreds, of, I mean, tens of thousands. I mean, after the genocide, you would see that you had, you had, you had testimonies of children that were basically for eight days lying under their great, their, their, under their, their, their dead uh, mothers and fathers and, gra and grand grandmothers and grandfathers, okay? Their brothers and sisters, eight brothers and sisters wiped out, killed, lying under them, dead for eight days without any food, waiting to, to be liberated. You had a colonel, a colonel in the United Nations uh, 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 I wouldn't even say army, United Nations uh, uh, special forces. I wouldn't even say forces. They're not even a force to be reckoned with. But now they're just corrupt and cowardly, especially when they've got the communist regime in, in control of them. You had this colonel who had no ammunition. He, had, he carried a gun. He had about three or four men on his, uh, he, I think about 10, guard, 10 men. Okay? He said, go and, 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 and guard the UN depots. And what he would do, he would send under the cover of darkness, thousands of Hutus, or sorry, not thousands, excuse me, hundreds of Hutu, a hundred or Tutsi uh, 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 people to save their lives because the Hutus were going with machetes to kill any Tutsis they saw, okay? Men, women, and children, and babies, okay? This is not, this is not, this is not some fantasy. I was, in, I was in South Africa. I was 15 when the bodies were coming down the Orange Free State River, okay? Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so... Sorry to be so heavy and so intense, but I've got to share with you my feeling of passion. And people have got to wake up now. It's 2020. Okay, this has been going on since 1994. This has been going on since 2001. This has been going on since 1999, people. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Okay, oh. smell the roses. So uh, allow me to finish quickly. So the, 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 the colonel was saving hundreds, hundreds of, of, of Tutsis, and he told his men to, 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 to guard the, the UN depots. And when the Hutus came to find out and say, listen, I want to see, uh, open these depots, open these, uh, these, 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 uh, these food storage depots, the two men guards would say, no, this is UN property. You are not coming in here. And little do they know, the Hutus standing outside waiting to kill had in the depots hidden because of this colonel's uh, heroicness, hundreds, hundreds of men, women, or children were just inside. Okay, so he saved the. They, he saved, I think, I don't know how many, hundreds and hundreds of people. So one day, he once while when the genocide was over, he was heading back and he got killed. His his armored vehicle got hit by an LED mine, um, and he got killed. And now I feel like if people believe in heaven and hell, this man was a hero. He's going to heaven because of what he did. He saved hundreds of lives. So you're a spiritual man. And the only thing that keeps me going is spirituality because I've been through a lot in life. Yes. Without believing that everything is leading to something else and mm. making you stronger so you can cope with what what is coming uh is there a way of looking at the annihilation of a beautiful consciousness and a beautiful group of people could it be that their sacrifice is leading to to people actually saying enough is enough now and yes. do you understand what i mean here that absolutely i agree souls maybe you know, how else can we come to with all of this? I mean, there's a part of me that believes that all those that have suffered and God knows how many millions and millions and millions, as you say, of people have died and something has been screaming, help, help, help. Mm, mm. Something has heard us. Mm. God or a beautiful alien or the mm. angels. And it said, right, that's it now. Enough is enough. You're going to have to wake up and we're going to help you because there's got to be something. It feels like everything is constructed in some way and it's all leading Correct. to this place now with this lockdown and with this virus. So how do you see us coming through this? What do you think we need to do? 
How do you see us progressing? A whole awakening is coming. Pardon? A whole awakening is coming. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. but it is going to be very painful, not easy. There will be a great disaster, a great disaster, where people really have to wake up. This was a biblical plague. This was uh, the wrath of the gods, as the ancient Romans would say. Now, you know, believe in what you want to believe. You know, some people are atheists, some people are agnostic, spiritual believers. It doesn't really matter. This was a warning. This was a warning from the heavens or the creator or the universe or whatever, because something like this does not just appear. It's like an earthquake, a tornado. It does not just appear. This affected every single human being in this earth. And I believe this was for us, this, this was something for us to really take heed of and become more kinder, more truthful, more tolerant. Stop always thinking about me, 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 and this narcissistic, apathetic, indifferent approach that because it doesn't happen to me and because it's not got nothing to do with me, I don't care about it. Well, now it's got something to do with you. Thousands and thousands of people are dead. More people are coming to be dead. This is a second wave. A second wave is now rising up in China. Um, I, I have a feeling that everything's going to get even worse before it gets better. I believe that this is a second wave that's going to rise up because um, right now in China, they are deliberately um, locking down again. We have just come out of lockdown uh, in Vietnam. I have, I'm actually in the next hour, I have to go and teach uh, kindergartens. I think it's a really wrong time to do that. But the three months, four months of vacation, I mean, they can't really hold off much longer. Um, but the sacrifice there's a saying the righteous pay a sacrifice to get what they deserve and those who have died it is not, nothing has been in vain and now you're going to see the shifting of the god shifting of the tide sifting of the sand to really show the genuine picture the evil are cornered rats on a sinking ship they've got they, they, there's nowhere to run and there's nowhere to hide they are running out of time these are empty demonic shells like the Rockefellers, like the Henry Kissingers, like the Communist Party, the globalists, the World Health Organization that is run by a security dictator, director general, who covered up uh, cholera outbreaks in his own uh, 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 Ababa uh, um, district. I mean, Bill Gates is a complete eugenicist, pedophile. I mean, you can see uh, from Hillary Clinton, you've got Bill Clinton, You've got a bomber. These are people. They're not even. They're not even. Pre he was not even a president. The the. I mean, I don't even want to go into this. Jeffrey Epstein was murdered because he was coming out with all the pedophilia. You talked about the children. The 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 the, the, the pedophilia. The the Vatican that has gone on. I mean, the the, the world elites. The Andromachrome. The Andromachrome. The blood that has been taken from the the. the the pituitary gland of tortured children. Yes. Who do you think is the biggest procure, procurement of this adrenochrome? The Communist Party in China, taking it from the, uh, the children of the Falun Gong practitioners. Forced organ I harvesting, so. of the God, and evil is going to be exposed on a level we've never seen before. So, yes, this is not this, 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 the righteous sacrifice, the people who have died in the name of goodness and getting the word out. And I might be one of them very soon. And I don't mind. You know well, what I mean? I don't well, mind. I don't mind because to fail to expose evil, to fail to... Pu I'm a warrior, Lauren. I'm a spiritual warrior. I am not guru. I don't know anything. I have very little uh, uh, understanding about much. I just know that I have to stand on the right side of destiny. And if it takes my life, I hope to God. I hope to God I can... I can um, you know, live a more of a noble life and live uh, and, and retire from this this world uh, 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 with a, with a woman, with children, with a good business that I can provide for. Yet, please God, if that's not in my, please but God, but, that's but, for but you. Listen. But because um, have you heard of Isaac Cappy? Because Isaac Cappy was um, a friend of mine. Isaac Cappy. Mm. I, I don't know. I haven't heard from him. He, no, he from highlighted him. the paedophilia in Hollywood. Yes. Coming up to his anniversary where he was, you know, thrown off a bridge somewhere. 
of course. And hot, uh, hot, yeah. that's how I got red pilled in Cappy's crew. We had our he used to get us to keep us all together, which is a lot yes. about what's going on. But um, God, um, um, I want to end with the light because I always like to take everyone from the dark into the light as we're yes. doing. What else can we do to help you? What would you like to say that you haven't said yet to anyone who will be watching it? Obviously, you can send this wherever you want and use it wherever you want with my blessing. So this is an opportunity now. What would you like to say to anyone who may be watching it? What else do you need? How can we help you? What else can we do? Well, I would love everybody to learn the exercises of Falun Gong or Falun Dafa and you can easily learn them free of charge. Try the practice. It's beautiful. It protects you from all these toxins and it really brings out a great stress relief and anxiety relief. Like I said, you don't have to be Jewish or Christian to practice or if you are or atheist. It's, it's a beautiful spiritual movement and practice and you can practice free of charge at faluninfo.net uh, F A. Yes, F. F A L U N, I N F O dot net. Okay, so it's similar to Tai Chi and Qigong, isn't it? From what? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Uh, and and the actual website that you can go and learn the practice is falundafa dot org. And find yes. info dot did you net. Say info dot net. Okay. Yes. I, I will put those on. If you send send them to me as well in a message. I will. I I'll will. I will. You can also uh, for people who want to learn more about China, uh, uh, to read a book that is quite profoundly powerful and will really open your eyes into how evil communism is and Chinese communism in particularly. Uh, and the Red Reign of Terror. This is called, uh, w, uh, you can get the book at www.ninecommentaries.com. The Nine Commentaries on the Communist Party. And yes, ninecommentaries.com. I'll send you the link, Lauren, as well. And okay. yes, and the two, two uh, there's two more uh, links I can share with you. Um, Stop organ harvesting dot org is the is the, is the site that I represent. Uh, Stop organ harvesting dot org, and the other one with all the reports and all the the, the, the 52 pieces of evidence that have come out from David Kilgore, David Mattis, you know, and Ethan Gutman is end transplant abuse dot org endtransplantabuse.org 52 pieces of evidence this is not some kidney in the bathtub theory folks this is legal state sanctioned organ harvesting done by no other regime on the face of the earth and no other government than China there, are, there is organ harvesting and purging around the world no doubt yet not on a legal state sanctioned run by the Chinese military run by the highest ranking powerful uh, nation in the world, I mean the communist regime, on such a state mandated uh, basis. So to end off, Lauren, I just want to share um, to your viewers, don't give up, stay in your heart, come from love, and no matter what happens and no matter how hard it gets, believe in yourself, believe in the universe and the creator and believe in humanity because no matter what we will get through all this insanity and i just want to god bless you lauren for allowing me to come on and share with you about oh, this thank you. Um, thank you so much um, i feel sorry for those people that won't open their minds at all and um, they're going to get everything is coming at them so quickly and they're just pushing it all away and i think quite a lot of people are not going to wake up and they won't come with us. It's this ascension thing. It's, you know, we are going into a higher vibration. Mm -hmm. and I've been called terrible names. When I put stuff out, sometimes I get called terrible names because they mm -hmm. cannot even comprehend, as you said. But then there's a huge awakening, and that's the light. Um, exactly. You, 
and, and I'm sure there's loads and loads, millions of people out there now that are going to go out and do the same. And we'll all come together. And as you say, the human spirit cannot be beat. You cannot get, you cannot beat the human spirit. That's why they hate us. The exactly. Of us. Even jealous. the love of the heart. They don't yes. have that. And they're not going to get it. I, I'd like to see an, a beautiful world where we can learn how to use technology in a healthy way. Like Correct. A healthy way. So we can learn how to fly. <laughs> and we can yes. do these great things. You, you know, mixing us, the human beauty of human being with technology in a beautiful way so we can progress so that we can have longer lives and healthier lives. Because again, I, believe, I think a lot of that was put into us, you know, beliefs and things that we didn't ask for. But um, it's been an honor to have you on today. Mitch. You too. And um, I pray that the angels go with you. I get a feeling that you are protected and you are going to be protected. Um, I remember my mother-in-law used to say to me every time I go to Israel, because I never felt safe, she said, the angels go with you. So uh, this program is protected. We've got all the mm -hmm. angels around us. And yes. flame. And I'm keeping touch, sweetheart, so we know you're getting on. And please, God, at some, I'd love to meet you when all this is over. Big hug. Big hug, Lauren. You I too. Hug now you too. From the heart. Yes. I, I, I'm so honored to, to, have, to have you on Moving on TV. And just, I'm so uh, grateful to Look too. after yourself. I know that you, we tend to not have a self protection in the ghost, um, but when you're needed. <laughs> yes. And your spirit is needed and i'm sure when you work with the kids i bet they love it when you turn on and say they must have such great rapport with you and you with them i can feel it yes yes sometimes they drive me crazy but i've i've turned my <laughs> approach because they want me to discipline them and I, the, the, the vietnamese uh they i'm like no i'm not there to discipline them that's that's for your you know that the Vietnamese woman have to, you know the TA the teaching assistants will because I found myself screaming at them or shouting at them I'm like no that's not me that's not love that's not love at all you don't want to shout at children there's no way to they are, they, because the little Indi they star children they are even more powerful than us indigos exactly and you're here to give yes. that direction if they Correct. Come from anywhere else so we can have a whole society of indigos and crystals and that know what they're here to do because god knows it's taken me my whole life i don't wow. think you you figured it out at 20 with me <laughs> no you've always been there Lauren. i couldn't figure it out <laughs> oh you've always been there um the thing i haven't figured out is how to how to what what is next in terms of a, being a man of provision because that's the biggest struggle i have i ask god every day what please allow me to become a man of provision at 40 and a half years old because I have no resources or investments or I don't know how I, 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 I haven't found a way to provide yet. So I hope yeah. that's coming. I trust that's coming yet. Like I say with the children, they are so bright and they are so special. And I realized they are not here to learn and be shoved down their throats. English, 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 English. They're here to be guided with the transmission of beautiful love and energy and with that, they will learn better, regardless mm -hmm. of whether they learn right there and then. Because I find also in this communist-style system, this hammer and sickle system of Vietnam and in China, they are bashed to the brim. No wonder there's so much suicide rates. No, no wonder children wake up after seven or eight years old feeling so miserable and they're, they're, they're lost and they, they turn to drugs and alcohol and sex. And it's just disgusting because the parents don't, instill and take the time to focus on their passion and instill with them a self deepest self love and self esteem mm -hmm. and they only focus on the results for uh, you got to do well in school in order to become some someone successful so you can take care of me again that's a very selfish apathetic and pressurized mm -hmm. way of doing things and so right now after take after with you 
because I see how you're like a fairy godmother. You are from the fairy realm. I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know if you've, you are a fairy godmother. I can tell also you have a lot of fairy yeah, magic. Um, fairy godmother, I tend to be to some people, yeah. Yes, yeah, so a fairy godmother and fairy, you got a lot of magic. Um, <laughs> I will take this from me and, and take it from you if you, if, I, if, I, if you allow me and share the angel dust and the fairy dust with the, uh, as a spiritual warrior with the children um, as long as I'm there because it's not about teaching English or teaching or getting results. It's about really at this time transmitting the love and the energy of the divine mm. uh, and a session with them a, a day once every, you know, three, yeah, you, we can feel, see results and we can, uh, there can be a performance and there's an effect. You have to be effective and do your best yet transmit it in a loving way. And not mm-hmm. a angry way or a frustrated way. That if you see the child not participating, or, or or not wanting to learn that day, that's fine because that child you don't know what's going on in that child's brain. You, she, he mm-hmm. might not want to be there. He might not want to be a, 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 an mm-hmm. English teacher. But you don't know the potential he has. He might just be forced. But to try and force him is taking you away from his spirit. Do you understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, by, by, yeah. Everyone is unique and creativity yes. is the best way. Creativity is the best well, way. Their creativity, because I'm an actress and a singer. Yes, yes. I'm an indie girl and, but yes. it's wonderful having you here. And, you too. You um, too. So peace, namaste. You too. After yourself, take care. Um, you too. To end the program there, thank you so much, Mitchell. Um, take care and we send you lots of love on New You day. too. And look forward to hearing great stuff from you. Bring it all together. And here we are today. Yeah. And that's why I'm Mitchell the Lionheart. Not Richard the Lionheart. Oh, I'm glad I recorded that. Richard the Lionheart. Mitchell, Mitchell the Lionheart. Mitchell the Lionheart. Sorry, Richard. Yes. Mitchell the Lionheart. You know, you know, you, yeah, you know Richard the Lionheart was in the Crusades. Yeah, but yeah. I, I don't know if he was a good man. I'm not sure if he was a good man or not. Where there's hatred.
Thank you. 